like there's just so many things to say about meat meal, but it's the fact they call it dried meat now on the label of the cheapest pet foods that really, really bothers me. It's just because they make their own rules. People think when they see the badge on the front and it's this is guaranteed by AFCO or not, not quite the words of that, but it adheres to whatever. There yeah. is very little regulation in pet food. We, you have a Department of Agriculture, the USDA in the States, we have a Department of Agriculture that comes in and checks the microbiology now and again. Not the nutritional quality, none of the claims, none of the protein and fats or where the, they don't care about any of that. It's just, you know, is it blowing the right levels on hazardous micro? But as you said, hazardous microbiology, it's something that's being used to whip the raw dog food industry at the moment, fresh dog food industry as well, that contains yeah. bacteria. Was well, listen, we contain back, raw dog food contains bacteria because the meat chain contains bacteria. It's a canary in the gold mine. If we've got super bugs in raw dog food, it's because the super bugs in the meat chain. You need to be yeah. far more worried about what you're putting in your kids. So now there is a way of stimulating the vagus nerve to help with that inflammation. And what they've done for RA patients, they are implanting a little um, stimulation device that stimulates the vagus nerve, just like the, a healthy GI tract would stimulate the, the vagus nerve. And that was then decreasing swollen joints and inflammatory markers as a result. Some ways of stimulating the vagus nerve are very simple, such as humming, for example, gargling, taking deep breaths. And in my practice, what I use to stimulate the vagus nerve is treats. Because that always makes my animal patients quite happy. But when they start to take treats, you can see how they start to relax. And that's because the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic, the rest and relax and healing uh, nervous system is being stimulated more, which then also makes them much more receptive to what I do as far as different synthetics that are added to the food, synthetic vitamins and minerals, because instead of using whole foods to get those vitamins and minerals, they're adding a synthetic vitamin mineral mix. When the body takes in a synthetic ingredient, it looks at it as a foreign invader. And the immune system says, that's a foreign chemical, we have to attack. And so we end up with a lot of inflammatory bowel disease, we end up with a lot of just generalized inflammation. So that's another problem. So when you read uh, an ingredient label, and it starts out with oh, chicken, rice, peas, chicken meal, whatever, those are things you read that and you go, I know what that is. And then at some point you hit salt, because that's at 0.5% uh, in the ingredient list usually. You hit salt and everything after that is a bunch of chemical words. Well, those are synthetic vitamins and minerals that are being added to the food that could cause a reaction in your dog's body. And so again, I mentioned that the high heat is causing inflammatory mediators. So it's just fueling more inflammation in the body. And we remember that that chronic inflammation, you know, slide that we looked at all the diseases that are being, you know, promoted and all of the body systems that are being affected when you are eating processed food, causing more inflammation and that it is causing direct carcinogens too. When you heavily heat foods, the AG, AGEs and HCAs are carcinogenic. Then we have toxic preservatives added to these foods on top of the heavy heating, okay, to preserve them for shelf life so they can sit in a bag for 18 months before the best buy date. And so these are things you may have heard of these common, you know, additives, BPA, BHA, ethoxyquin. Ethoxyquin, by the way, is added specifically into fish-based meals for pets. So it is a, a preservative that does fish. And that over time, we know all of these are cumulative in their, you know, accumulation in the body and, and the pet can become more toxic or the body becomes more toxic over time. So even if there's only small measurable amounts per meal over time, it's a big deal how much toxins pets are getting. You know, microbiome restorative therapy um, is a term that we coined in 2012. And the idea behind it is that we want to restore the whole microbiome, not just a fecal transplant. It's a really important to understand in your brain gut, heart gut, lung gut, liver gut, all skin gut relationship. The microbiome is so critical for the balance of the body. And in a normal human being, there are hundred trillion microbes uh, that live in symbiotic relationships and they each play a part. And we do not even know what the, what species are there. There's 500 species and a thousand subspecies. And we don't really know. We, we know that they're so important and they play an, a big part in 
how an animal is is able to heal, how an animal is is able to recover from a, a, an injury or some particular disease. And so if you can get the microbiome to work for you, that's what you're trying to do. So what is a probiotic? It's a tiny microorganism. It can be a bacteria, it can be um, a little fungus, and they are intended for health. When you think of a bacteria in the traditional term, like a germ, that's pathogenic, as in it's intended for disease, Um, but a probiotic is actually something that's supposed to help our body. So what are some things that negatively affect the gut flora or the microbiome? Believe it or not, chlorinated and fluorinated water. Um, Antibiotics, that's one that most of us know, um, mainly because of the name. If it's an antibiotic, it's going to kill bacteria. And we've learned that it doesn't just kill the bad ones, the pathogenic ones. It does kill some of the good ones. Um, Even things like antibacterial soap, um, processed food. If everything that your pet eats is brown, that's not good for their gut flora. With the fact that 70 to 80% of the immune cells in our body and in our pets' bodies live in the gastrointestinal tract. So literally three quarters or more of your immune system sits in your GI tract. So all of a sudden it starts to become a little bit more clear why gut health is so closely linked with overall immune health and immunity. Gut health, there are, as you know, there are many factors that play into gut health. Certainly the biggest one is, is diet. Uh, but, but I think, you know, as we all know, immunity and the functioning or relative lack thereof of our immune system pretty much governs our quality of life. Uh, you know, I mean, if your immune system is not functioning right, you're probably not very happy and neither is your dog. Uh, and that's really, I mean, you know, top line view, it, it, you can't separate the two things. So why do we care about diversifying the GI microbes? GI means gastrointestinal. So why do we care about, you know, what's in our dog's guts? Um, You know, why do we want it like uh, a whole variety of of microbes? Why can't it just be one, you know, big beneficial bacteria, that type of thing? Um, So why do we care? Because the more good gut bacteria you have in the gut or in the lining of the intestines, Um, it'll reduce the bad microbes. So there's less room for those bad microbes or bad bacteria to colonize and cause um, inflammation, upset stomach, decreasing digestion, all of that. Um, It'll make a stronger, for a stronger gut. So if we have a variety of microbes helping us out in our intestines and in our GI tract, then we'll have a more, a stronger gut, basically. You see that. You see that there's a lot of antidiarrheal drugs and diarrhea is like this evil thing that that people present, right? And talk about. But diarrhea is a very good way of getting rid of toxins and impurities, something that your dog ate. And uh, in the acute form, it can be really seen as the cleansing process, as the body's way of getting rid of something that doesn't belong inside and that could be harmful, whether it's bacteria or toxin. This morning, my dog, Pax, uh, we were walking in a park and unfortunately, they sometimes leave a little precious gifts on the lawn. And uh, so when dogs eat, uh, whether it's food leftovers and worse, and then obviously sometimes it ends up in diarrhea because the body goes, "Uh uh-oh, this is not really good. And so, you know, it has to be seen as the body's way of getting rid of something that shouldn't be there. The five elements in traditional Chinese medicine is basically like um, it's almost like our genes. So in China, in Western medicine, we think your personality is over here and your genes are over here. In Chinese medicine, we kind of see them as the same box. So that dog who tends to have this problem or is more likely to have this problem as they get older may also have this kind of characteristics, this kind of personality. They see them as kind of part of the same sort of uh, uh, tools that you bring into this world. Right. And, and it is very similar to like our breeds, you know, how most of the time our dog breeds will all, not always, but oftentimes all the labs kind of do this and all the pit bulls kind of do this and all the dachshunds kind of act like that. Those are not necessarily because they're of that breed in Chinese medicine. We say that's their constitution. 
that little dachshund who like chased that squirrel around the yard, you know, is that's a little wood dog, you know, they are, they are Napoleon, they are, and we worry about things that can happen to them. We worry about them getting gum problem, you know, gum disease. We worry about them having back problems as they get older. And a lot of those have to do with the fact that they're a wood constitution dog. So in Chinese medicine, I know, you know, Dr. Katie, we think, okay, well, that's, that's the wood dog, you know, that's what's going to happen. Um, and so we watch out for those things. But then we might also think, you know, what, I'm also going to try to do, feed you foods when you have a one-year-old, two-year-old wood dog to try to prevent them from having those, those imbalances when they're older. So it's kind of a way of both looking ahead for your dog to try to prevent problems, um, as well as once they're there, if they have an imbalance in that in that element, then we try to use food along with acupuncture, along with herbs to try to help heal them and help pull that imbalance back. Um, mm. So we really have like the five elements, which are uh, wood, fire, earth, metal, water, and we see different personalities as well as different kind of imbalances that can happen with those five elements. Yes.